Here it is, the land of awesomeness, Kung Fu Panda. Got the Chinese dragons all on the ceiling. You got bamboo, trees all around. It's a fantastically themed land there. Uh, we were being told yesterday that um, this area regulates all of the lanterns and the tree and things like that and it changes through the seasons uh, on a cycle of two hours which is quite cool so essentially I think that means every half hour it changes the season and goes around that way the the level of immersion and detail in this land is incredible you know if we look up onto the uh, facades around the top you, you, you've got facades for all the restaurants and things like that but then you do also have some really cool little details. If we look over into the distance here, you've got a little mountain that's got a little house on it. You know, you've got trees that are reaching the tops of the building. That's because that's in the film. That's where he was like, you know, he had to climb up the mountain every yeah, time. Yeah, 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 it's cool. It's really, it's really well done. And you've got this one here as well. You know, it's a good mix of um, like physical and screen based as well. I do think they could have done that entirely physical, and that would have been nice, but is what it is. The tree has only just done a little uh, like show design thing. We kind of just missed it, unfortunately. We couldn't get the camera out quick enough. Autumn to summer, maybe? No, but to all of these uh, statues look fantastic. You've got fireworks in the sky down the back there. It's just a really awesomely themed land. We've got all of the Dragon Warriors here. The Dragon Warrior Master Poe. The tree is currently in the process of changing and doing a little uh, fancy pants show for us, which is really cool. Which means some of the lanterns around the land are changing as well. We've got lots of blue lanterns now. Just look to the side here on this tree, you've got all the blue lanterns. Then one singular red one, I'm not sure why. Oh, there's a sleeping pig behind us. There's a singular red one on each tree, look. Yeah. You've even got a place here at, to get noodles at Mr. Ping's Noodle House. Poe's dad has got his own noodle house here in the land of awesomeness. We're going to head on to the headline attraction here. Walk through the land. And go and see the journey of the Dragon Warrior. This is much different to yesterday. We queued in this entire area yesterday. And, one thing of note though, they do have the queue to absorb you here. Yeah, this was walking the whole time. Oh, my God. 
你们会合。时机正好，神龙大军，我们需要保护和平。但是武侠已经在路上，找到阿宝，恳请帮助他大败天煞。村子起火了，这下我们可是自身难保。So in the queue for the lanterns. These are quite cute because they all kind of change colour as they go around. This is really good that they've got these. They've done these in a few places because they did it in Disney as well. But it stops you from splitting up, splitting up and going into a different car. Because we told them there's two of us, we need one car, so they've given us this for one car. We we're going on that. And then each of the groups here has got their own boarding pass. Here we go! Back in Transformers land here. Oh, we got Megatron! He's out meeting. This land is actually really good. You've got a seating area down here. Like, it's just really well themed. The theming is fantastic. Even just like the flooring is cool. 
And how you've got like this multi-level type communication thing here. There is quite the queue to meet Megatron. Megatron. It's also good how, well, I mean, it's the same in Orlando, but you've got a whole queue to actually meet him. But then people can just stand here and take photos of him. Here you've got Bumblebee's Boogie. basically teacups with Bumblebee controlling them and doing uh, music. A different song each time it seems. Pretty cool, we've got, we've got a few different songs. So we're gonna jump in the queue for the Decepticoaster at the moment. Posted at a five minute wait. 90 minutes yesterday and today it's a five minute wait. It is a walk on to get on what is the biggest ride in the park? night and day difference that ride is. It is so, so fun when you don't smash your head and get a headache after it. Universal Orlando, if anybody from Creative is watching this, please do something about the restraints on the Incredible Hulk roller coaster because it is a good, good roller coaster. But it hurts so much. If you just change those restraints, I will be forever in your debt. You are in debt because of them. Yeah, I am in debt because <laughs> of them. Sorry guys, thanks, thanks. Um, I will continue renewing my annual pass, I promise. Uh, regardless of whether you change them, but I really do wish you would change them. So just leaving the Transformers Metro base. We stopped at this little stand here. We got a couple of uh, fancy pants looking drinks here. It's a Universal Beijing Resort on them. And then we've got some cool cakes as well. We've got white chocolate mousse, we've got minion cupcake, cola flavored cupcake, minion Swiss roll, and a passion fruit coconut mousse. So, not sure what we're gonna get, but we will get something. Look at these popcorn buckets. So you got a Transformers one. You got a minion with a, uh, a Chinese dragon. You've got two plus in the back. You've got a banana minion with a teddy, minion in a like unicorn rubber ring, and then the universal popcorn bucket. This is cool. I want them all, but I'm not gonna buy any of them because I want them all. And we've just bought the cupcake and the Roselle drink, which they told us to stir. Let's give it a stir, see what it, uh, see what it looks like. I think it's because whatever's at the bottom is really strong. And it just sticks in there. Okay, oh, it looks like it's uh, going a bit funny. Let's see, is it? Uh... It's really sweet, whatever's so, at the bottom is. Like let's, a, give it, uh... let's give it a, like a jelly type, but not a... It's almost like a concentrate. It's yeah. Really, it's really sweet, it's really... but it's really nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I like that. Untrainable. That's what we're going to go and see now. Theatre here in Hollywood. And how do you know you're in Hollywood? Because you've got the Chinese theatre. But you've also got these manhole covers as well. That say Hollywood. Hello. 
heading into the Majestic Theatre. Let's go. Projection technology to simulate real I'd say we've got a pretty good view here. We're going to have a great view of all of the effects here. And we got here 25 minutes before the performance time, and we went upstairs. much better show second time around sitting up the top so when epic universe opens and you want to go and see untrainable at epic universe which you must do by the way you must must do that sit at the top and get there early get there so, well i feel like people cotton on so that's the best place to be because up there they were just rushing to it weren't they yeah they were rushing to go up the top and uh, yeah, it really is a much better view because we saw under the clouds yesterday. That's presuming that they have a top. It is presuming they have a top. We don't know how the thing's going to But this in. time, at the top, we've got a view down the stage and it's a much better view. Um, I kind of want a snack again after just having a cupcake. Snacks are good. Snacks are bad. Snacks hit you in the pocket really really sad so more decisions have been made with a toothless ice cream look at this look how cute it is coconut. right so yeah it's coconut and pineapple flavored which i didn't know so let's open it and I then it'll taste like malibu oh <laughs> malibu and pineapple juice pina colada anyone could be could be i don't think it will but we'll see We've also got a minion one here as well. I'd love to know what the minion one tastes like. How amazing does this at, look? Look at the tray, it's even got the imprint it, it in comes, it. Oh wow, that's so cool. So this actually, right, like, turn it back around again. Like it looks like his head and then like little legs and little... Uh, <laughs> like a little stick man. A little stick man <laughs> with, a, with a very big head. Yeah, it's quite cool. I like it. So next up we're going to go into Jurassic World and the transition between uh, lands here, the music is really good because we've just started to hear like crickets and stuff in the bushes. The archways to Jurassic Park and Jurassic World here are also so much bigger. We're going to take a look down here and go to the waterfront see what the view is like down there. We've got Jurassic Flyers just coming around.
I do like this ride. You got, like, it's like a raptor paddock. I'm surprised they didn't build Velocicoaster here though. I've been eating the ice cream. <laughs> and now she's telling me my lips are bad. The eighth wonder of the world. The backside of water. Oh, yeah. I'm getting really wet here actually. <laughs> this part down here is so tranquil. You've got the uh, Jurassic World Adventure there. You've got a Jurassic Flyer coming around. And then you can look straight down Hollywood Boulevard as well. This park is stunning. I think Jurassic World is like one of my favorite lands here. Um, Kung Fu Panda. Close second and first. It's like that between Kung Fu Panda and Jurassic World. Fantastic areas here. I think the level of detail that they've put into this and the fact that it's like each land here has three or four food locations. They've got two or three rides. You know, it's such a great immersive theme park. We're now going to go on Jurassic World Adventure because this is the best ride in the park hands down and it's posted at a 20 minute wait currently it's better than Forbidden Journey that's probably longer it's looking good 20 minutes, it's not bad this is the first time we're actually queuing in this area. This has been a walk-on every time when we've come in in the morning for early entry. So, not that we understand it, but we're getting some kind of uh, safety instructions and pre-show video here, which is quite good. Um, and then we've got, around here, we've got signs about the dinosaurs. Um, and they are in English and they're in uh, Mandarin as well. Which is, which is good. Ah! Ah! <laughs> what a ride Jurassic World Adventure is. I would probably not get off that ride if it was in somewhere like Orlando or Hollywood or whatever. <laughs> I would be on it, I would ask to carry on, it's just absolutely incredible. Uh, I think it is one of my favourite rides in the park, I think it is my favourite ride in the park, I think it's the best dark ride that Universal have made, I think it's quite possibly the best ride that Universal have made. So. It's fantastic. We are walking out of Jurassic Park, uh, and it's not Jurassic Park, sorry, it's Jurassic World, Isla Nubla. That's what they call it. Um, and we're gonna go into Minion Land, and we're gonna hopefully try and watch Sing on tour. This is a little stage show that they've got here. It's not gonna be that busy because the parade is on now, and it's the only parade of the day. Yep. They're setting up for the parade here. So, hoping and praying that we can get a good show on Sing. Um, the other thing is, we did watch the parade in our last video that is linked down in the description. So do go and check that out. Um, absolutely phenomenal parade here that Universal hit on as well. I think, you know, pretty much everything in this theme park is a better version of something else in the world. Or, just a better version full stop it's it's fantastic so sing on tour is at the illumination theater um, kind of right in the middle of minion land you can see they're setting up the ropes here for 
um, for the parade. Yep, pop banana, as we showed you guys this morning, that's the banana flavoured popcorn. Uh, that's where you get your minion popcorn bucket that's shaped like a banana, or your one with uh, the dragon, or the one on the, like, unicorn rubber ringy. Pretty cool. Three popcorn buckets. Um, yeah, sing on tour. Oh, that's a cool detail. Wow, this is a really nice theatre. I like it. We've never seen this before. They've got it in uh, Beijing and they've also got it in Osaka, Japan as well. We're in the Sing on Tour Theatre now. Enjoy the show. Sing on tour. That wasn't what I was expecting. Who was your favourite singer? Uh, John, uh, well, Johnny was really good, but then the porcupine girl, what's her, what's her name? What she, what's her Asha. Asha. She was fantastic. Like, I just, that show is not what I was expecting at all. I was expecting just like screens basically, and then it turned into one of the best entertainment offerings that the park has to offer. Really good. So we're making our way back into uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter at the moment. The parade is just happening to our left. So hopefully we can get into the Wizarding World before the parade finishes. And then we won't have queues in the Wizarding World. Fingers crossed. We've come back into uh, the Wizarding World of Harry Potter. We've got Hogw Hogwarts Castle there. We got the frog choir on the stage as well. I'm always so impressed with the frog choir as well because these guys sing perfectly in time. And the frogs are singing perfectly in time with them. They manage to keep up with each other so well. 
So I've come into the queue for Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey because I want to see how much this differs from the Orlando version. Um, the ride itself is not going to be any different from what I can imagine, although it will obviously be in Mandarin. But this queue is long. Very, very, very long. I think we're doing the full extended queue. So even the Orlando version, that part is over there. Oh, that aircon is nice. Just kind of want to see if the queue is any bigger, really. See if Dumbledore's office is any bigger. Gryffindor common room, all of that. Dawn French, not being French. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we've got an additional part then where we're going downstairs. And then we go to lockers. Wow, okay. Interesting. Wow, the Gryffindor common room is quite a bit bigger in here. And then you got show there explaining to you what the uh, ride vehicle is like. So I just did um, Harry Potter and the Forbidden Journey. They have no single rider queue here, which is very interesting. Um, Though I did get to the end of the platform and she was sort of trying to say to me in Mandarin, single rider, single rider, single rider. I had no idea what was happening. So the girl behind me was like, you're a single rider, right? Go forward. Um, very, very strange experience. Now, as you guys saw through the queue, um, the layout of the queue is different. Now, I think the reason for that is because of the culture. People want to keep their phone on them and keep their bag on them and things like that for a little bit longer. So that's why you don't do the lockers at the beginning. You do them sort of three quarters of the way through. You've already queued your 100 minutes or so if it is a long queue. And then you are effectively on the ride after that. Um, the other thing, there I think, I think there is an additional scene in that ride that I believe is in the Orlando version, but it isn't turned on. Now, just after the Dementors, when Dementor, you have... Dementor, Dementor. Dementor, Dementor. Uh, you don't have Dementor, Dementor. You have Dementor, 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 because there's three Dementors that get you. So one comes at you, bang. Two comes at you, bang. Three comes at you, bang. And then just after that scene, there's like a whole wall of Dementors. Um, there's a lot of interactive wand areas here. This is a uh, chocolate frog jumping out. This is cool. So yeah, the 3D Dementors. Um, there's like 10 of them in kind of like a wall, basically. And you kind of like 
lunge at them slightly rather than them lunging at you. Um, so I think that is an additional scene um, that I'm not sure is on the Orlando version, in use anyway. Um, it's like it's like in pouches so you don't have to touch it. That's really cool, that's really cool. They're so hygienic here. Um, the other thing, I think they put more ride vehicles on the track because they had a clear view of all of the ride vehicles as they were going around the one next to me. Um, and the ride vehicle itself isn't as, uh, it's, it's not as enclosed. So if you've been on the one in Orlando, Hollywood, whatever, you know that it's like really kind of claustrophobic and like right there, you've got um, like a wall basically between you and the person next to you and the person next to you, them. And that's not like that in that. So you've got a view from the side of what's happening throughout the ride, which is quite disappointing. Um, because it ruins the effect slightly. If you can see the screens, the ride vehicles, the effects that are happening, all of that lot. And then also right at the very end when they, um, let's say, disenchant your bench, um, they've not themed the corridor very well. So you can just see like, black basically and uh, you can see a corridor sort of down the end that's weird because it was basically a pretty poor experience um, but I'm happy I went through it because I've seen the differences now um, and now we're just in honey dupes because we've just found I don't know if this is in Orlando buttery flavored chocolate oh, no, milk chocolate bar with butter, for, like, butter beer flavored filling Okay, even better, actually. even better. Look at this, butter beer chocolate. Looks amazing. You got the conductor here. Very cool, and he's speaking uh, like a combination of English and um, Mandarin. He's also making jokes in English, and uh, nobody's understanding them. It's fantastic. Hello, sir. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, sir. Where are you from? London. Sorry. London. I heard you. I'm just sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking, I had it in this time. Welcome for visiting us in Scotland here at Hogsmeade. This is your first time, sir? This is my fourth time. Your fourth time, yeah. welcome back, or welcome home, should I say. Your hot dogs, you know? Um, they keep trying to be in slippery, but they keep changing. Oh dear, is that what the sort of fans are doing? They keep trying. You can have a word with it. You just have to say, not Slytherin, not Slytherin, not Slytherin. Yeah. <laughs> That's the trick. I don't you appreciate it. I'd like to be a brave really Yes, of course you are. Well, after three, let's say brave Alright, sir, are we ready? One, two, three, brave Got it. Perfect, sir. Enjoy the rest of your time at home. Thank you. <laughs> I think he was just quite happy to have a whole conversation <laughs> in English there. Um, I had quite a long interaction with him because he's, um, you know, he's asking about, you know, how, how long we've we been here, things like that. What are you doing? Why are you here? All sorts. It's uh, it was really cool, really good interaction there with the conductor. So it came out with little um, butter beer barrels on it. I've never seen this, so I don't know if it's available in um, Orlando or not. Maybe I'm just not looking closely enough. Or maybe it's new. Maybe it's new. Tastes really good though. It tastes 
really, really good. Um, quite a bit of filling. Quite a bit of filling. It's nice. So, we've seen the whole park. We've done everything that we wanted to do. I've got a mouthful of chocolate. It's disgusting talking to you at the moment. So yeah. I'll stop, I'll finish this and I'll catch up. This is quite a well-themed land. The facades are actually like really good. Because they've built this land from scratch to be Minion Land, unlike in Orlando, where they've just got kind of like... I wonder if they ever had like Minions up there or something. Yeah, that would be... Yeah, that would be really good. I am a bit sad that this is not an actual ride. Yeah, it'd be cool if that was a ride. I think it's just really good how it's not show buildings like you have in Orlando. They've actually got decoration. In Orlando, it's just a show building of sorts. So, yeah, this is, uh, this is really good. So, we've pretty much finished everything in the park, at least everything that we wanted to do. Um, I didn't do Bumblebee's uh, boogie, which I'm a bit sad about, but you know what? It's just a teacups ride. We have done pretty much every other ride in the park. Um, oh yeah, we didn't do the Kung Fu Carousel. We didn't do those like small flat rides and didn't do Flight of the Hippogriff because we've, we've done that like loads of times. Um, but this is a cool park. We just come back into Super Silly Funland because we've come to get our stand. Which is over this way. Becky is telling me I thought it was that way. Um, for, our, for our passport. These passports are like a big thing here it seems. We go and quite a few of them, there's been a queue of people getting their stamp. Um, the one in Hogsmeade as well was manual. Every one of them have been like electronic, you slide your passport in, does the stamp for you and then pushes it back out. The Hogsmeade one was a manual one, which was just really cool. Uh, we've had to come back in here to get this one because it was turned off this morning for some reason. I'm not really sure why. But we did this. That was quite cool this morning. Look at this. It's a minion ham and cheese toasty. That's what he started like, I think. That's what he finished. <laughs> That's what he finished like. He looks like he's crying. I love how they've like themed this to basically be like this is minion munchies and like mum and dad with baby towing the caravan it's amazing it's such good theming we've got the lair here this is uh, the food establishment like the main uh, quick service here I want to see what this is like and see how it compares to um, minion cafe This is really cool in here. Rice bowls. Ah, oh, so it's like um, you know, it's like a food court, basically. You got pizzas. You got rice bowls. Bapples ham pizza, margarita pizza, pepperoni pizza. Uh, seafood pasta with white cream sauce, pasta bolognese. It's quite fancy. It looks fancier than the Minion Cafe, but I think the Minion Cafe is better. Yeah. Braised tofu. Oh, yeah, a bit of theming. In the villain layer, and, and I've seen this around the park, but I may have just got my favourite souvenir of the whole holiday. And there's been a lot. And there's been a lot. I bought a Universal Beijing Globe sippy cup. This was 9.50 with the drink. With the drink. That's unbelievable. That's so, so cheap. There's also a team member just here, I'm gonna show you. Blowing bubbles so people can take pictures in front of Bake My Day, which is hilarious. They're so big on taking pictures over here. Should we go and bake my day? Is that? Is it too cheeky to go and bake my day? 
Hello. What have they got in Bake My Day? Not as much as the one in Orlando. They've hardly got anything, but I don't know. It's the end of the day. Yeah, if it's because it's the end of the day. No, they've got a handful of things up there. Rainbow cake pop, they have. Uh, they don't have it here. Character cake pops, minion mousse, cupcake Swiss cake roll. Two pounds. Yeah. Pounds. About three pounds, yeah. Insane pricing. The last ride of the trip. It's going to be light camera action at the Pantages Theatre with Steven Spielberg and Zhang Yao. This was such a phenomenal ride. We're going to take you behind the scenes of how a film scene is shot and put together. The special effects that are in place through a scene. A disaster. Hello. I'm Steven Spielberg. I'm Zhang Yimou. The film can be said to be the most excited place. It's on stages like this that filmmakers can create anything that we or you can imagine. Set in the scene all over again. Very, very cool.
All right, so that is our final time and our final view down Hollywood Boulevard at Universal Studios Beijing. And thoughts? Really good, really good. I think I think there's a lot less screen-based rides here. Definitely recommend staying in the hotel if you're coming into the parks. But generally, really good. Yeah, fantastic park overall. Um, it's good that they sort of pay an homage to their roots with like the movie making thing there. That's kind of lost now at Universal Studios Florida. Apart from horror makeup, I do enjoy horror makeup over there. Um, and I think, like Becky said, there's just a lack of screens here, screen based rides. Granted, you know, you've got Transformers. Jurassic World Adventure does have quite a few screens, but it's also like a really. The physical, physical set, set heavy. Yeah, right. the physical set's so good, you kind of forget that screens are really a problem. Yeah. So, so it's just despicable. It's just ones that they transplant, though, basically. Transformers, despicable me. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think just like everything here at this resort is better. Uh, you know, it's, uh, it's like a much better um, version of everything overall. And. Um, you know, everything's bigger, everything's better. They've souped it up. Minion Land looks so much bigger and better. Uh, Jurassic World is a full featured land of Jurassic World. Transformers has got a really good presence here. They haven't got the rights to Marvel here, so they've, they've utilized what they've got and they've done a really good job with Transformers. Um, and the shows, guys, yeah. the shows have been top tier. I, all of them. I, all three of them that we've seen. Every single really one. Good. Yeah, every single one. Untrainable was fantastic. I really, really did enjoy seeing it this afternoon, which I wasn't expecting to. You know, it, it, it's a great, great park. And, um, you know, as a theme park enthusiast, I am so thankful to, ha to have the opportunity to come over here. And I would encourage anyone, if you do have that opportunity, please do get yourselves over here. China, scary place to a lot of people, and we were nervous coming over here. Beijing, maybe it's not the tourist destination that you're looking for, but... But if you are going to do Disney in Shanghai, it really was easy to get here. One train. There's, there is, there's no need to go to one or the other here. It, there's, you definitely can do both. Although it looks far, and four hours seems like a lot, it's so easy, it's worth doing. Well, you can even fly it in about two and a half hours. So you've got choices there. Guys, fantastic park. Fantastic couple of days we've had. Love every inch of this park and it is brilliant. So if you guys have enjoyed the video and you've enjoyed following along on our adventure here in uh, Universal Studios Beijing, do give us a thumbs up. We really appreciate it. It does help us out so much. And it'd be great if you could hit the subscribe button and bell icon to be notified when we post all new videos. We'll see you on the other side. Thanks. Thanks.